Hello. I'm glad to welcome everyone to the second lesson. In this lesson, we will get acquainted with the direct 3D modeling mode. Its difference from other modeling types is that it does not require preliminary sketching to get started. This is its advantage, but there are also disadvantages. For better understanding, I recommend repeating the demonstrated steps along with me. Do not hesitate to pause the video if you need more time. On the 3D Tools tab, select Direct Modeling. On one hand, we can create a simple 3D model with a few clicks, for example, a box. As we see, by default, the initial construction plane is XY. Later in this lesson, we will delve deeper into working with coordinate systems. When creating shapes in direct modeling, we can create them arbitrarily or set their sizes through pop-up windows or the command line. For example, let's enter a radius of 30 and a height of 25. Quick and convenient, but after creation, such a body is displayed in the history of constructions as a non-parametric body. First, let's enable the display with edge showing. We can edit it. Let's click on body, and by pulling the appeared editing grips, we can increase or decrease its size. We can even specify by how much to change the size, but we cannot set it a parametric or associative size, as our body is non-parametric. Any unfixed body can be moved in space by dragging. To do this, click on it and holding the left mouse button, drag it wherever you want. Also, the position of bodies can be changed by specifying numerical values for movement along axes or angles of inclination. We will look at these methods a bit later. If you hold down the control key while dragging a body, then we can create a copy of it. Thus, we made two objects from one. Let's move on to the direct modeling functions. The first four, extrude, loft, sweep, and revolve, are the same for both direct and parametric modeling. We will try them in the next lesson. Let's look at the remaining commands. The first, slice, allows to split a 3D body into parts. Let's try to slice our box. Select the Slice command. Choose the cube as the object. It will highlight in blue. Press Enter to confirm the selection. Options for constructing the slice will appear in the command line. Planar object, the body is sliced with a chosen plane. View, the chosen body will be sliced with a plane parallel to our screen at this moment. Let's try. Select a point. The distance to the plane will be determined by the point we chose. Click on the part that needs to be cut off. We got a slice parallel to our screen. Let's undo the changes. Let's go back to the slice. Select the object. Confirm. Next, the choices of X, Y, Y, Z, and ZX planes. This is slicing our body with standard planes when one of the standard planes is chosen as the slicing plane. Three points creates a slice with a plane passing through three selected points. Let's specify, for example, the vertices of our box. Next, we specify the part that will be cut off. And accordingly, we get the results of the slice creation. The next command is section. Its creation is entirely similar to making a slice but the result of the operation is not the slicing of a 3D object, but creating a 2D section on the selected plane. The 3D object remains unchanged. Let's try this using the remaining box as an example. Select three points again. Specify the vertices of our box. Now let's use the hide command. And we are left with a 2D region. The obtained section can be given thickness using the press pull command. Click on the command, select the face, and then choose which direction we will extrude and by what amount. Suppose by 50 millimeters. With this command, you can extend the needed face of a 3D object. Any flat faces are suitable. If we need to give thickness to a closed or curved surface, 
then the thicken command is suitable. For this, create a sketch of a circle or an arc. Extrude at a short distance and use the thicken command. Select the surface, confirm by pressing enter. Specify the thickness, let's say 10. Now we have assigned a thickness to the curved surface. Another useful command is offset edge, which allows to create an equidistant contour of the selected plane, based on which you can then create the next 3D object. For example, let's select this face. As we can see, another contour has appeared. Confirm its creation. Now we can extrude it and thus get a sketch, based on which we can create further 3D objects. This concludes the first part of the lesson dedicated to direct modeling. Thank you for your attention. When you're ready, proceed to the next part of the lesson.